Hey y'all, leave your prayer requests in the bottom. I pray over everybody who comes across this channel. I pray over everybody who you leave in the comment section. You, God knows your prayer request. And uh, let's be a community of prayer. Jesus is coming so soon. And, you know, last night, the Holy Spirit, I turned, I uh, went to my Bible app in my phone and I was listening to Matthew 25. And something really stuck out to me. The Holy Spirit really showed me that it talks about the rapture. It talks about our bridegroom. It talks about the bride and the body of Christ. And it talks about the pretenders, the people who are wearing a mask, but they are not, they don't really have a relationship with Jesus. And do you remember that story where the 10, it's in Matthew 25, where you have, I think it's like 10 versions. They they have their lamps with oil. I'm sorry. It's early in the morning and my brain's still trying to wake up. The foolish um, don't have any oil and they have not kept their lamps full of oil. And they think that going to church, they can piggyback off of other people and as long as they say that they are a christian and the they can piggyback off somebody and be the bride of christ and go with us but the holy spirit really pointed out something to me you can't piggyback off somebody because remember how the foolish said, hey, give me some of your oil. They made an announcement. Hey, the bridegroom cometh. And they're they're sitting there with no oil in their lamps. And they're saying, hey, give me some of your oil. And the true body, the true bride of Christ was like, no, go buy you some. I was prepared and I will stay prepared for my bridegroom. I have provided and i have got my oil go get your own oil and to a lot of people that would seem cruel but we are told you know we have a personal decision to make we cannot piggyback off somebody else's faith we cannot piggyback off of somebody else having a relationship with Jesus. We have to build our own relationship with Jesus. We have to submerse ourselves in the oil. We have to get our own oil, which means we have to get in the word of God. We have to build a personal relationship with Jesus. And yes, I know Sometimes you don't really get that opportunity to build a relationship with Jesus because you do have some circumstances where people come to Jesus on their deathbed and it's a, a last minute great awakening of I need to give my life to Jesus and then they don't have the time because they die. So they don't have that opportunity and the Lord understands that. So please do not come in the comment section and be like, well, some people don't have that opportunity because I have had that happen before. And I want to make that very clear. I am talking to the people who do have the opportunity because you know what? Everybody has been given the same opportunity. It's just some people keep rejecting the opportunity and rejecting it and rejecting it. But you know what? If you truly have a heart for the Lord, the Lord knows your heart. If you truly love the Lord and you truly give your life, your heart, your soul, everything to the Lord, hell no. And if your time is shorter than what you anticipated when you give your life to the Lord, because you could literally give your life to the Lord and give him be wholeheartedly and then walk out and die. Like you could literally be hit by a car, whatever. 
have a stroke and die, and you don't have that the opportunity that you thought you did to give your life to Jesus, he knows your heart and he knows that you wanted to build that personal relationship with Jesus. Because remember, Jesus died on the cross, not for religion, for relationship. Because I just want to, I just go into this verse. If you are lukewarm, if you don't know Jesus and you're like sitting on that fence because Satan owns that fence and you're like, I want to know Jesus, but I want to party it up in the world. So on Sunday morning, I'm going to know Jesus. On Wednesday night, I'm going to know Jesus. Ooh, at a church function, I'm going to know Jesus. But if there's no actual church involved, I don't know Jesus. I'm going to deny his name. I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to go party it up. I'm going to go to the casino and gamble my money. And then I'm going to go to church and be like, I know Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus is my everything. And then as soon as you walk out that church building and nobody's watching, oh my goodness. Like, I don't know. What? No, I don't know him. Girl, I need a drink. Ooh, let's go party it up. Like, that's not how you treat Jesus. That's not how you build a relationship with Jesus. That's not how you get into the kingdom of heaven. You need to build a relationship with Jesus. Don't be foolish. Be wise. When you go to... I don't even go to a church building because the church, I found that church buildings are just so corrupt. They don't really teach the full word of God. And if you find one, you are so lucky. And let me tell you, I mean, I'm going to tell you something. This is not for everybody. But the Holy Spirit, about 2018, actually pulled me away from the church. And when I told this to the preacher, because I tried going back to the church a few times. The preacher told me I was foolish. And I'm like, but I feel weird when I'm here. I feel like there is a disconnect from Jesus, from God when I'm in this building. And I mean, the they were saying the right things. And it seemed like... It seemed to be all the right things, but under the surface, it, it it ended up not being the same. And when I started actually, when 2020 hit is when, and all that stuff happened, I noticed that I was starting to see it, starting to see the true colors of the church buildings. And it really just made me go... No wonder you were pulling me away from the actual church building because you needed me to build my personal relationship with you. You wanted me to truly be rooted in you. You wanted me so that you could use me for your kingdom, your honor, your glory, your praise. You needed me to be disconnected from the world so that you could work on me, build a relationship, and use me. God led me away from a church building. And I have not been able to find another church building that that I can truly fill the Holy Spirit in. But let me tell you, I talk to Jesus, I talk to God every single day. And believe me, they know how cuckoo crazy I am. They know why this channel is called Love the Hot Mess. But you know what? Jesus loves me despite my flaws. And Jesus has shown me that I am in a spiritual battle with my flesh every single day. Oh, believe me. I have uh, I have not been the ideal Christian that the church has painted. I have been a screamer, a yeller. 
I've cursed a couple of times here and there, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I am, I am a horrible person. And Jesus is like, yes, you're a sinner in need of a savior. I will help you overcome your sinful flesh. You can't do it alone. There's these churches out there that preach, if you sin, that you could be taken off of the Lamb's Book of Life. No, that's not true. You're, you're, once your name is there, your name is there. But here's the thing about sin, that a lot of people get confused, and the Holy Spirit is really just, ugh, um, really just kind of showed me, and that people who sin lawfully they 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 love their sin and they can't live without their sin and they'll reject god they'll reject jesus and they will not repent of their sin because they they love their sin more than they love jesus we are sinners we are going to sin every single day until jesus calls us home there's no way around that we're gonna we're gonna stumble we're gonna fall because we are in a battle with our sinful flesh we are in a battle but what what separates us from the people who who sin and enjoy their sin are are in love with their sin is the fact that we're fighting it we fight it and we fight it with the power of jesus jesus may take us around that that uh that mountain a few times not to harm us but so that we can overcome the sin that we have been battling whether it be the sin of addiction the sin of sexual nature, um, a sin of cursing, a sin of talking bad about somebody or putting somebody down or not wanting to be a blessing. Um, the Lord will take you around the mountain a couple of times to help you be an overcomer, to tear down your flesh and build up up the holy spirit within you and believe me when you give your life to jesus people love to tell you oh it's oh it's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows no 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 when you give your life to jesus and you truly give your life to him and you are committed to live for him and build a relationship with him all your sin gets exposed it's like there's your sin now let's overcome it let's tackle this sin you get this big pile of sin that you are going to spend the rest of your life overcoming it's it's kind of like jesus is like here's all your sin now let's take it little bit by bit and let's overcome this and then we'll work on something else and it becomes a process of you and jesus working together to overcome your sin building a relationship with you a personal relationship that is unique to you but a lot of churches don't want to preach that a lot of churches don't want to even say that because they I don't know. They they just don't. And you can tell there's not many churches that are truly rooted in Jesus. Somehow there's this picture of how a Christian should be. And then you get these snobby bobbies who walk around with their nose up in the air acting like all holier than thou. And it's like, dude, you reek of sin. You reek of, like, you, you reek of Satan. You do not reek of Jesus. But yet, the church tells them, hey, 
because you dress a certain way, you act a certain way, you look a certain way, you sound a certain way, you're holier than that. Well, guess what? Just because you go to church, just because the world says you're the ideal Christian, it don't make you better than me. You are a sinner in need of a savior. You sin every single day of your life. I am no better than you. You are no better than me. We are all sinners. And God doesn't look at one sin differently than he does another sin. The world looks at sin on different levels. If you steal a candy bar, if you go and then or and another person murder somebody, the world's going to be like, oh, candy bar here, pay a fine. And, oh, you murdered somebody? Okay, you're going to prison and you're going to lose your life because you took somebody's life. Why, meanwhile, this person over here who stole a candy bar has to pay like five bucks, you know, to pay the fine for the freaking candy bar. And to pay for the actual candy bar. That's how the world views sin. But Jesus, God, is like, oh, you stole a candy bar. You murdered you stealing a candy bar is on the same level as this murder. That is how God views sin. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter how little or how big it is. And we live in a world where they look at sin as if there's different levels. And God looks at it as it's all on the same level. And... You know, a lot of people don't want to be humble. They don't they don't want to be like, Jesus, I sinned. Jesus, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I need your help. Pe- people don't people aren't asking God for help. They're just like, Hey, you died. Okay, forgive me. Great. I, I'm a sinner, but I'm forgiven, so I'm no longer a sinner. And you got these snobby badabis who aren't even grateful that Jesus went and died on the cross. For your sin. They're just like, huh, he died. <laughs> okay. And it's like, no, 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 no. You need to be grateful that Jesus gave up his life. You need to be truly grateful. You need to, you need, when you come to Jesus, when you came to God in prayer, and you're asking to be forgiven of your sins, not just say, hey, forgive me. You need to be humble like a little child saying, hey, I screwed up. I screwed up. I am a sinner and I know I do not deserve your forgiveness. I am undeserving. But I know you went to the cross. I know you paid my debt and I am forever grateful. And Lord, I need to ask you once again, forgive me. Forgive me. Help me to be better. Help me to overcome my sin. Lord, please, I don't want to be a sinner. Come to him with a heart that says, Lord, please. I am unworthy, but I am so grateful that you died for me and I can come to you and ask. You need to come to Jesus with a heart. That knows you are unworthy. Knows you're undeserving. Knows that you do not deserve the love, the grace, the mercy, or the forgiveness of the Father. We do not even deserve to live the life we have on this earth. We don't deserve to have four walls and a comfy bed. We don't deserve to have clothes on our back. We don't deserve to have food in our mouth or water to quench our thirst. We deserve absolutely nothing. Our works are as filthy rags. I mean, if you really want to get technical, our works are like dog poop. They're nothing. They stink. They're disgusting. Our works mean nothing. A humble 
heart who is willing to be a servant of God. A servant for Jesus. Knowing that you do not deserve anything that they have done for us. Knowing that you sinned. Being guilty that you let your Lord and Savior down by your sin. Coming to him and saying, Lord, please forgive me. I know I don't deserve it, but please I need you. Help me to overcome this sin. Please work with me to overcome my sin. Keep your lamps full with oil. Keep your heart full of Jesus. Be humble. Strive to be like Jesus. Be grateful that he God has promised to give you a new glorified body. That way you will be perfect when you are one with Jesus. We will be made perfect when we are one with Jesus. When we become one with Jesus. At the glorious rapture, resurrection. We will have no more sin, no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain, no more regret. Because we will be truly made in the image of Jesus. We will be perfect like him. I am looking forward to that day. And I am so grateful for that promise. That one day I will not have to to live in a sinful, fleshful body who loves to sin. And I I am here, a child of God, the bride of Christ, fighting my sinful flesh every single day so that I can be an overcomer. And I cannot do it without the help of Jesus. And neither can you. We are going to sin. We are going to stumble. We are going to fall. It's how you choose to overcome it. How you choose to ask to be forgiven of your sins. Is your heart truly breaking because you sinned? Are you feeling guilty because you sinned and you truly do not want to sin anymore? How are you reacting? Are you being like snotty and like snop stop saying, well, Jesus died for me, so I can be a snobby Christian. And the world says that this is the Christian I need to be. Or are you going to come to Jesus humble with a true heart that hates the sin? Hates that we stumble and fall. Because remember, the world views sin differently than God does. The, the world likes to put sins on levels. Level 1, level 2, level 10, level 20. And God's like, yeah, every sin is one level. A murder is the same as still in a candy bar. Yet different, but yet it's the same. Because it's a sin. It's a sin against God. It's a sin against Jesus. Think about it. Our sin is all on the same level. How crazy. If we slip up. And say a curse word. That's the same as if we murdered somebody with God. Think about it. Jesus loves you fiercely and passionately. And the seven years of tribulation is coming upon this earth. 
God is going to pour out his wrath to all who sin and fall short of the glory of God and have not repented of their sin. You can't use the excuse, well, I'm a good person or I'm the perfect Christian that the world says. Um, well, I only saw a candy bar. Oh, I only said a curse word. No, God's going to punish all who are left upon this earth in the seven years of tribulation. It doesn't matter what sin you committed. God's going to deal with it all the same. Everybody gets the same punishment. And Jesus is going to be nowhere to be found in the seven years. I saw the I saw this video yesterday and it sent chills down my spine because I was listening to this woman speak of this child. And the Holy Spirit was just like, Pay attention to what the mom had to say. And Jesus just kept saying, I'm coming. I'm coming. God's about to send me. Hold on. And I can't, I can't wait. I want to be with Jesus. I want to be with my Lord, my Savior, my King, my Savior, my Redeemer. He's my everything. He helps me overcome. 